Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Sorry. Um, I hope you can hear me. So um, my name is Tony Pierce. I'm the co-founder of Reality Gaming Group. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here to tell you about uh, why NFTs will unlock a hundred billion dollar games and collectible industry <coughs> on the blockchain. So let me just um, share my screen. Okay, everyone. So, um, yeah, so why NFTs will unlock a hundred billion dollar games and collectibles market on the blockchain. So um, for years, um, gamers have been have been spending billions buying in-game items with no ownership rights or control. And, um, you know, these items can only be used once in a game. Gamers cannot sell or trade these items. And if the game goes offline or if the publisher stops, you lose everything. And in fact, if you um, if you think about that, if you look at, um, I don't know, a real life story, let's say I walk into a store, uh, let's say Topshop in London, and I buy a shirt and um, Topshop then goes bust, which actually two months ago it did. I could be walking down the high street and my shirt would disappear. That's what it's like in the games industry right now. If a games publisher or games company stops or goes bust, you lose everything. It's wrong. Game economy and hyperinflation and games distribution and discovery, two key things that are problem for gamers, which I'll explain more as I go on. So I know uh, um, a lot of people here um, that are listening are totally aware of what NFTs are and why we're so excited about the market. So I apologize if I'm going to go over stuff that you already are aware of. But for all of those newbies in this space, um, these are the key problems right now that that, that are, are there for gamers. So the blockchain is changing all this. And why is that? Because of the introduction of NFTs, non-fungible tokens. So again, going back to basics, what is a fungible and non-fungible mean? Right, so fungible um, is an, uh, a basically an item that can be exchanged for anything that's similar. A $1 bill can be exchanged for another dollar bill. Non-fungible has completely the opposite characteristics. They are unique, irreplaceable, and non-interchangeable. And an example of this, um, which I always give, is a plane ticket. So, you know, a plane ticket looks the same as other tickets, but each has a different passenger name, destination, departure time, and seat number. So I cannot swap my plane ticket for your plane ticket. That is non-fungible, and that is what an NFT is. So why are NFTs um, used in games? Well, NFTs give players real ownership over their in-game items. All items are logged uh, on the blockchain confirming validation. The blockchain confirms it's unique and players can sell, trade or use their NFTs in different games. So let's talk about um, one of the key problems is game economy and hyperinflation. So Every one of you that's played games will understand that games have an economy, whether it's online games such as World of Warcraft or Fortnite or even mobile apps. The problem that games have is that the makers of these games can create more currency and items at any time. So if a game needs more currency, we simply go out and we make a billion more coins. And actually, it's a bit like what the government's doing right now um, to help the economy through the COVID pandemic. They're printing more money. But as we all know, nothing is for free. And by printing more money, so inflation increases, goods get more expensive, taxes go up and we have to pay the money back. And in games, it's exactly the same. And for those, um, for those that play games long enough, you actually become a millionaire. In fact, you become billionaires. And as a result, any new player that enters that game <laughs> will kind of look around and go, I actually can't afford to be here. You know, there's all these billionaires that, are now, that have now been saving up for years and they've put the price of all the in-game, all the in-game items up. And th this is because the game cannot burn the currency fast enough. Hyperinflation. And games tend to die after five to ten years because of this. So, you know, just think about it. Imagine if you'd spent 
all that time, days, weeks, years of your life building up your currency and all your in-game items, but due to hyperinflation, the game cannot get any new players, so it eventually stops and you lose everything. Now, imagine a game in the future where items inside the game are not unlimited, but scarce, and the currency is capped. So let's say there's only a thousand of a certain gun. The guns are unique. And once sold out, they're never available to buy from the game again. The only place to get these guns will be trading it with other players or players willing to sell them to you. So the whole concept of the game now changes. You now own the item, which you can sell to another player. The game builds up engagement and more retention and keeps in-game inflation down because the game publisher cannot just go out and make another thousand of the same guns and increase the price. And this is exactly what our first game, Reality Clash, does. So Reality Clash is a, is a mobile AR game that combines in-game NFTs and trading. So in our case, these are tokenized guns. And the game is now live on the app stores, both Apple and Google. You can download it now just by searching for Reality Clash. And it uses very clever AR technology. Um, and in fact, in Apple's own words, it's the best use of AR they've actually seen in a game. And basically you go into combat, you turn into an avatar and you challenge people in real time AR combat. But what makes this game really cool um, is that it's still one of the first mobile games where you can buy limited edition NFT guns via our online marketplace, download them into the game, look really cool because you've got one of these, these limited edition super cool skins. And then when you're finished with them, you can withdraw them and sell them. Um, and now we've actually sold over 10,000 NFT guns and had over 2 billion Reality Clash coins spent in our store. And um, you can trade those weapons in, in other marketplaces as they are all um, sort of ERC721 tokenized NFTs. And you can withdraw them. And here's an, an example of um, the guns for sale in OpenSea. So let's talk about the second problem, games discovery and, distribu and distribution. So you know, years ago, content was king, and that would be enough to get your game discovered. But now the platform and the distribution is king. I mean, where would Game of Thrones be without HBO? You know, where would Angry Birds be without the App Store? Where would Pokemon be without Nintendo? These platforms decide what to show you. Now, you might have the best game in the world, but if no one finds it, it's worth nothing. So content today is being strangled by distribution platforms and, and the cost of acquisition. And if you don't um, do what the platform says, um, you can easily be thrown, you, you can be thrown off. I mean, you know, Fortnite and Apple being a, a recent example. Now let's turn that on its head. If you own digital items, which can be used in different games, the game should find you based on the content you own. So again, another example, let's take World of Warcraft, you know, a massive online game, 30 million, 40 million online players spending hours and hours minting and creating virtual items that they don't own. And now they've stopped playing the game because they're bored. Hyperinflation has taken over. No new players are coming in. But it's a community of tens of millions of users that have items to use in that game. Now, if these items were stored on the blockchain as NFTs, then imagine if another games company comes along and makes a game which can take that community and allow them to use those items in their game. So it's a great way for discovery and a great way for user acquisition. And what you can do here, you can actually um, start creating community ecosystems around different content. You know, so you can take your items, friends and community into new games. You can have gun ecosystems, sword ecosystems, tank, warship, jewels, cards, magic ecosystems. You know, games companies will now make games based on the content that you own and not have to worry about getting new users via distribution channels and spending millions on acquisition. I mean, just as a, an example, you know, if, if we had a million players in Reality Clash all owning um, their NFT guns, I can offer these players to another games company where they can go on and use their Reality Clash weapons. I'm happy because I'm selling more guns. The players are happy because they can use them in more games. And the games developers are happy because 
they've got a large community of players for free. So it's win-win. Um, so I just want to give you um, a little information about Reality Gaming Group. So uh, we were founded in 2017 um, and we have two businesses, um, Adapt and Reality Studios, um, both focused on blockchain games and NFTs. So our, our DAT um, platform stands for Digital Asset Trading, and it's a platform that can tokenize anything, including in-game items, art, even music into NFTs. And we log them and store them on the blockchain. And then we can develop online stores for you, and we can develop marketplaces, and of course then go on to make a game. And we have Reality Studios, which, uh, which makes our games and actually was voted um, last year as one of the top 25 blockchain games companies. And we now have four games and a roadmap of new games coming out later this year. First one um, is Doctor Who, um, which last year we announced an exclusive deal with the BBC to create a digital trading card game. And um, this allows players to trade those cards. And um, I think um, hopefully you saw Morton's presentation yesterday, which gave you some um, insights into our fabulous community. Um, but here's a, a quick video just as a reminder about what Doctor Who does. So um, just some stats, actually. So in eight weeks, um, we've now sold over 30,000 packs. We've tokenized over 177,000 cards on the blockchain. And um, earlier this week, we launched a brand new pack called Time Lord President. And we sold um, 1,650 packs in 15 minutes. That's 110 packs a minute or 1.8 packs per second. And our trading platform launches next month. And the game comes out later this year. So it's very exciting. Um, our latest release um, is Smitey's Universe. So Smitey's actually comes from an award-winning uh, New York-based company called Herotainment. And um, Smitey's, it's, it's a mashup of words, small and mighty. And um, Herotainment have created a, a diverse cast of characters um, who have uh, mini, um, mini but powerful heroes. And um, they've uh, had a very successful um, cartoon series already in the US. It's shown on over 40 digital and broadcast channels and has over 40 million views on YouTube. Also has two very successful mobile games with over 2 million downloads combined. And it's, you know, it is a popular multi-platform entertainment brand. Our recent launch takes Smiteys to the next level and you can now buy Smitey NFTs. And I kind of think of Smiteys as a combination of um, crypto kitties, axes and blockchain cuties. A marketplace launches later this year, followed by uh, games that you can use them in and you can buy them now at smiteys-universe.com. So um, back to why will NFTs unlock a $100 billion games market on the blockchain? So last year, games, um, or the global games revenue was $159 billion. Uh, mobile revenue was $77 billion of that. But did you know that actually only 3% of players actually spend money in mobile games? So if you think about that, 97% of mobile gamers spend nothing. So just imagine if you can convert another 5 or 10% to spend some cash. And why wouldn't you if you now own the item and you can sell it afterwards, make your money back or even make a profit? Not only that, but if we can stop hyperinflation and we can create better content and games discovery because of content ownership, then I don't think we'll increase this market by five to 10%. I think we'll increase this market by 50%. And that's why NFTs will be a new $100 billion games market. Thank you. Um, 
Okay, so um, uh, thanks for the questions. Let me just go some of, through some of these. Do you see any blockchain games that are in danger of hyperinflation problem? Um, no, not at the moment. Um, and that's um, that, that's because I ho hopefully we're we're fixing that problem. We're putting um, a, a cap, a ceiling, make uh, on what you can buy in terms of NFTs, and and that's that's giving its its rarity and its scarcity, um, which is why I think we're gonna why this why we're all into NFTs. Why I think it's gonna um, change the market for good. Hope that answers your question. So, who's the most interested in your opinion to make in-game items interchangeable between games users can't do much about it developers question mark um well i think we've all talked about the interoperability um of nfts and content going from one game to another um we are massive fans at reality gaming group of this and um you know we hope to see certainly in terms of reality clash and the weapons being used across not just other games that we're developing but across games that um, other developers have approached us with so i, I think it's um just super exciting and um you know anyone that wants to make games that uh, can take our nfts in we'd be delighted to talk to you and uh and um yeah take that further thank you for that uh, I've already collected two thousand dollars of NFTs. NFT collection seems to be a trend in twenty twenty one. I agree with your opinion one hundred percent. Thank you. Um, recently, Musk's wife sold NFT paintings for five point eight billion dollars. I think NFTs will be more developed in the game market. However, there is an opinion that the NFT market is a bubble right now. Engineers, consumers, uh, be have uh, be surprised. Uh, it, well, I, I mean, I've been in this market now for three years and for the first two years, um, I think we're all um, we all believed that there was uh, light at the end of the tunnel and there was going to be um, uh, a utility to use these NFTs in. And I think um, I think that's so key that these NFTs have a use. Um, I, I, I think what's happening in the NFT art world is incredible. And, I, and there's certainly the hype. And I, I'm loving the fact that now, finally, people are believing what we've been talking about for years um, uh, in uh, around NFT and, and gaming. Um, but I always find you know, art is about collectors. I think game NFTs is about being able to use them in um, in a utility. And I think it's 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 important that um anyone launching game nfts has something to use them in so um i don't think it's a bubble i think um it's about time that the press saw how fantastic this market will be and um it's up to games companies like us to make sure that there's fun and interesting games to use them in. uh why would a developer want to create assets that could be used in other games aren't they just creating competitors that can easily pirate their players no, not at all. It's it, it's completely the opposite. Now, I I I want our players to be able to take their items into any games, and it's like I said, it's it it's fantastic for us because you've got to buy the NFTs from us originally. What we then want to do is go to our community. Look, you can play them in this game, and you can play them in all of these other games. Off you go, and uh, and, and sharing the community, sharing the love is exactly what what we're after what well, but yeah you know, that that's what makes nft fans and players so great it is about um uh being interoperable this is a new market this is different you're not siloed into one game anymore um how hard was it to get the dot two license from the bbc um yeah it was it was we, we started talking to them god it could be almost two years now so um i think um, when you're explaining blockchain and NFTs to any company, and the first, you know, as soon as you mention blockchain, they kind of um, they get scared off because they think blockchain, crypto, and um, that's that's bad. But actually, once once we started to explain why um, NFTs are good um, and why the BBC should be involved in this, and 
and looking at the the, the roadmap of what we can be doing with them, um, it was uh, it was fairly easy. I think once people understand the technology, once people understand what you can do with them, um, I, I, it, it, why wouldn't you do it? So um, that wasn't too bad. Thank you. How do you see other utility being integrated into special NFT items like access to special esports gaming events, commerce content? I think um, NFTs and esports, that is the next big thing. I think if you if you are if you're a fan of esports and you're watching um, the player in a game with a certain sword or a gun winning and he's a champion, how much would you want to use that sword and that gun? How much how much value does that have? This is a winning a winning sword and, and this champion is using it and I could buy that from him. Now I could have that 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 champion's in-game item. I, th I think that is just going to be enormous. Um, the ability for you to uh, almost almost buy items off of uh, an esports team. And, and, and I mean, how, how cool is that to say to your mates, oh, I've actually got the winning sword from, from um, World of Warcraft and, uh, and, and, and trade that on. Why do you plan to implement some nft uses across all of your game or when do you plan sorry to implement the same nft usage well i think the first one we're we're, we're starting with is reality clash because we have um uh, sold a lot of those nft weapons and you know it's it's uh, it's an easy um nft and token to make other games for because you know as a as an nft gun imagine if you could take it into call of duty um, imagine if you take it into Fortnite. Um, so, you know, it, it goes down to even offering players you know, simple target practice um, games. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I, I think that's the first one. The Doctor Who cards, I think that's um, a bit more siloed because obviously it's a trading game on, on our particular boards. Smite is absolutely, definitely, your, you know, we hope that you can take those characters into many different games um so uh it is something that we have have in our roadmap do you think the gaming industry might lose many of their top digital artists to nft art solo projects do you think the gaming industry might lose many of them um possibly um i'm not i, I actually i i don't know the answer to that um it, it, possibly how could you balance a game that invites gamers to bring high level items from another game? What would that not disadvantage new users and accelerate the game inflation? How would you balance it? Um, how would you balance a game that invites gamers to bring high level items from another game? Well, but I mean, game balance and game design and game play, gameplay would have to, would have to, be developed to make that work. I mean, game balance is is a huge part of um, of game design. So um, I think that's something that the game designers would have to plan in. Which three NFT friendly games would you rate top three in potential perspective? Uh, right now, I think I think Axe is fantastic. I think. Um, uh, sandbox is going to be great um i think our games will all be fantastic family games and friendly games um so many great games out there it's really hard to pick all of them how soon before we have top shop style game clips being made into nfts or has that already happened i think it's already happened actually um but yes uh you google it I would love to have been able to take items from Entropy and to update it, but yes, so would I. <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, I'm with you there, Andrew. Um, I know it's not a question, but I totally agree with you. Stephen, um, a lot of crypto game participants are investors and not so much gamers. How would you attract more gamers to blockchain games, which will be needed? Yeah, so you're right. I mean, what we see it with, um, 
NFT buyers right now is they are mostly speculators. But we are, we've always been right from the very beginning, a company that wanted to make our games mass market. And the way to make them mass market is to make the user experience super simple. In fact, most gamers don't care about the blockchain part. They don't even know what they, who cares about the technology that runs it. Just make sure it works. And, oh, I can trade my items. How cool is that? Um, so, you know, even when it comes to uh, Doctor Who, you know, paying for um, the NFTs, uh, we, we, it's credit card, it's PayPal, and it's crypto. Um, we don't just want to be crypto only. Um, you know, it's up to it's up to us and all of us from who've been in the games industry for a while to make the U, the UI as simple and as friendly as possible. Um, that's and, and I think we've going back two years ago. Um, God, it was a mess. You know, it was so tricky. Um, and two years on, I think it's got so much better in, in a year's time. It'll, it'll, it, we hope it'll be as simple as playing any other game and, and the, U, the, the, the whole UI and, and that side of it. Um, it's up to us to, to make it good. Wendy, so William, uh, oh, that one's gone. Uh, it's gone to the top, sorry, William. And um, when do you think the silos will break down to have a truly open game marketplace across games? I think, um, I think it's a few years yet. I think, you know, we, the, the whole um, interoperability bit, we're starting now with our games. Um, but I think it's all, what, what will attract other games companies, as I said in my presentation to us, is if we've got millions of users, if we've got a community that we can offer to other games companies. And, um, and you know, you need to have you know, millions of users to make it a decent sized community for any, any normal, AAA games publisher to look at you and at the moment you know we're everyone's still small in this industry but so I, I think it'll be a couple of years yet but it will happen guaranteed uh, what will happen when the big players in the nft world massively into the small nft collections that cannot compete with them um what happens when the big players in the nft world massively into the small nft collections if i understand that correctly um i don't know but I'm, uh, you know big players in the nft world i mean we're seeing those you know are they the whales or you know we're, we're still a with if you i mean i've been in the games industry for 20 years so i go right back to sega nintendo early playstation and then mobile game we're still tiny compared to those guys and um, what's exciting about this market is that I've, of all of the new platforms that have come out over those 20 years, you know, from PC to mobile to social games, you know, of all those new platforms, the NFT blockchain platform, if you want to call it that, I think is the most exciting I've seen. And actually has, if you look at the hockey stick of suddenly people talking about it, um, grown quicker than when mobile games came out. I mean, I remember when mobile games um, came out and everyone laughed. No one's going to play a game on mobile. Look what happened. And, I, and and it was the big guys that laughed. It was the EAs and the Activisions who were obviously big into console going, no one's ever going to play mobile games. Um, and then same thing with Facebook gaming. That everyone laughed at that. No one's going to play social games. And, um, you know, it's kind of the same thing with blockchain games. You know, the big guys are looking at it going, no one's ever going to do it and we know they will and we're proving them wrong and i think they're now looking over our shoulders going this is actually a very interesting market and um i think in the next year or so we're going to start seeing the big games companies um get involved and um i very much look forward to that so um i'm out of time so there were so many great questions there. Oh, where do I do? How do I even answer that? Um, I'm just going to flick back. Um, uh, let's go with um, uh, Vladimir. Um, that was one of the first questions um, that I answered. So um, let's go with you. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs>